What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and to another video and the first of its kind video on the channel. Yes, I'm finally doing a state of the collection video. Well, partial state of the collection because I'll be showing you six of my favorite watches from my own collection. These are watches that don't necessarily cost a fortune but have a certain significance to me and are watches that I wouldn't sell to no one no matter how many millions they would be offering me for them. Big shout out to Enic Watch for supplying this watch winder, which I will be diverting to back and forth throughout this video. More on that a little later. And also to allow me to display my beautiful watches in such a beautiful box. And also big shout out to Jason the Watch Guy from the Watch Guy channel. I will put Jason the Watch Guy channel. I will put a link down below for letting me borrow the idea for the video because he did it first. Now let's get into it. I have to say that before this watch winder was delivered to my door, I never ever considered selling any of my watches or reducing the watch collection in any way. Even watches that had very, very little value to me, I just kept them for a long term because to me, the more watches, the better. That's not the right approach. But after a couple of days of playing with this and taking watches in and out, I can actually say that right now I'm maturing a little bit. And by that, I mean that I can appreciate how good this looks on the counter and also seeing my watches nicely being this plane in there. You can see beyond the fact that this is not just a watch winder and it's a place where you store your watches. And also consider the fact that I might be good and I will live if I just have a small core collection of six watches. Well, that being said, let's talk a little bit about Enig Watch, as in who are they and what do they do? So according to the website, a link down below again, they've been around since 1993 and they do high-end watch boxes or watch box related stuff. I mean, overall proper premium stuff. I mean, proper. You can find watch boxes ranging from $500 all the way and watch winders all the way up to 20K bulletproof watch safes. I mean, that is insane. I'm not sure how many people buy those, but I'm not intending to put a dent in my savings accounts anytime soon for a bulletproof watch safe for that's worth 20k but nevertheless they send me their virtuosos series 6 which retails for a cool 946 euros or just a smidge over a grand us which is a bit on the higher end but most watch winders are i feel nowadays reminder this is aimed for people that have at least three watches over four grand in their collection and to be completely honest, I am not one of those people. I do feel that owning this, I kind of feel like I have a watch collection that is very, very expensive, but I'm not actually even close. But let's talk about the watch winder. So on this, the build quality is absolutely insane. Everywhere you touch this, it feels premium. The finishing, the hinges, and it comes with a remote and a touch screen. I mean, why the hell not? Why would you not do that? The Japanese motors are super, super quiet and you can have this on the nightstand next to you, spinning away in complete science and you can still have your beauty sleep while your watches are nicely winding on the counter. You can throw a toggle through all different spinning speeds, spinning speeds? Spinning speeds, depending on what movement your watch has and you can select or isolate every individual watch to rotate. Or you could, if you don't want to do any of those things, you can have this with the light on as a very, very expensive display piece. So for that, thank you very, very much, Enig Watch. And speaking of display, let's kick off with the first watch in my collection. This may not come as a surprise to you, but one of my all time favorite watches is the Hamilton Khaki Auto in 38. This watch has many good things going for it. And this particular one has a certain significance to me. Now I did a review so I can link that down below, but I'm just gonna go through it again for people that haven't watched the video. I bought this brand new a few years back and it was the first purchase that was fully funded by my small YouTube channel earnings 
but this will always be my first serious Swiss made entry level watch and it will never ever leave my collection. It goes with everything, can be dressed up, it can be dressed down. You can put any strap on it. Prices have been creeping up, but if you want, you can find one that is a few years old for around $400. And I can assure you that you are making a very, very good purchase. The H7 movement in these is just a proper workhorse and it has metal parts, not like the PRX autos, the newer ones. This one also comes with a 80 hour power reserve. To this day, this is still, in my opinion, a must have in every collection. Next up, since we're on the topic of Hamilton, I have another Hamilton. And this is the Khaki Aviation Pilot or the Cooper as is known in the community. And this is the 38 millimeter version. Yes, it exists and no one seems to be talking about this. I was a big fan of the movie Interstellar and the watch, but again, unfortunately, the 42 millimeter version of this is way too big for me. I found this at a serious discount in an outlet nearby, accidentally, I might add. And this watch, when I saw it, it was a match made in heaven, so I couldn't resist. I love Hamilton's take on the traditional pilot watch that made it instantly recognizable. It has the same 80 hour power reserve H10 movement and it's just perfect. I mean, perfect for my 6.3 inch wrist. And compared to the 42 slash 44 millimeter versions, this has a 200 meter water resistance and a screw down crown. I mean, it has everything you ever need. I wanted the 42 millimeter version so much and I tried one on, but it still felt too big, but I never lost hope. And as twisted as it sounds, the universe listened and I walked into a random shop in a fancy area in Dublin and there it was waited, waiting for me. So remember guys, when you see a watch shop that you've never been into, just go in because you never know what might you might find or treasures. Next up, two divers, and I'm going to talk about these at the same time. And these are the two divers in my collection, the Seiko 62 Mass SPB 143J1 and the Seiko Heritage Turtle, or the Slim Turtle, I think it's called, SPB 317J1. And I know what you'll say, why do you have two divers that do the same thing? in your most born collection. Well, to me, these watches do different things and it's Seiko. You can never have too many. And besides, on top of that, I got them at a very, I got them both at a very, very good price. So starting with the 62 mass, this is just a brute of a watch and it's more of a daily. It, it just does it all. It goes towards the limits of what I can pull size-wise for my wrist, but that confident solid look is the thing that attracts me to it. I have it on an Uncle Seiko clasp, which sort of reduces that weighty feeling on the wrist and it makes it an even better daily. I wanted a 62 mass look. I had the C-Stern homage, also reviewed down below somewhere on my channel. And that C-Stern just enticed me even more. So when the opportunity came around, this to me was a no-brainer. Both watches feature the 6R35 movement, which has the 70-hour power reserve. With that, you have extra versatility on that front. The 1968 Heritage Turtle, or the Slim Turtle, as you like to call it, on the other hand, is a different experience you need to try on a Seiko Turtle before you say you don't like it. Again, as with all watches in my core collection, this is a match made in heaven. I feel that the Turtle has that perfect footprint on the wrist and this is a watch that always saves me when I'm lost and I don't know what I want to put on. I do think that once you're bitten by the Seiko diver bug, you can't really stop. My only complaint with this would be the aluminium bezel insert that I'm afraid that one day I'll put a big gash on it and I will be devastated. But on the other hand, you can always find, find parts for Seikos in general. And also watches are meant to be worn, not 
baby, so I think I should just snap out of it. Let's move on to something a bit dressier. This is my Orient Star and it comes from their contemporary collection and it's probably in my opinion, the best looking watch here. And you can get all of that under $500. This found its way in my collection because I was a huge fan of the Saab 035. And when I started collecting at the time, I just couldn't get one. Fast forward five years and the prices have skyrocketed and I just don't think they're worth the money they're charging for them anymore. This has that Saab feel to it and also a bit of Grand Seiko. I love the slight angular design of the lugs and plus the power reserve, in the power reserve indicator just elevates the look of that dial, bringing a touch of class and complexity, I believe, to the overall look. Now, granted, it runs a bit rough at plus 20 seconds per day, but to be honest, I couldn't care less. This is just stunning. And moving on to the final piece in the collection, certainly not least, this is the Christopher Ward Sealander C63 GMT. I am a big fan of Christopher Ward, especially of their earlier design. I also own a C65 Trident GMT, but out of the two, this gets the most wrist time. I had this on my recent holiday in Spain alongside three other watches, but 90% of the time, this was on. Very versatile and a just perfect all-rounder with 150 meters of water resistance, super light and on-the-fly clasp and the on-the-fly clasp makes it that that much better. The design is heavily inspired by the Explorer 2 which is very obvious but I am not put off by that in the slightest. If this watch is good enough for Adrian from Bark and Jack, who owns an Explorer 2. I mean, I think it's good enough for me. The older models from Christopher Ward are just really, really good value for money, and you can pick one up for under a thousand euros. They're older models, the ones where you have the, the name on the dial as opposed to the actual logo, which some people might not like, but I think they're really well made. They're a very, very good brand who has grown in notoriety, who has grown recently, and I think they're very, very well worth it. So that, guys, that is the end of my Enig watch box review and also partial state of the collection video. Thank you very, very much for watching. Let me know in the section, in the comment section down below, what do you think about Enig watch? Have you heard of them? What do you think about their products? If you have, let me know what you think about my watches and in the state of the collection, I love every single one of them. Thank you for staying until the end. Click a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't so, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.